So, I am Connor Alford, and this is my honors project. Um, I'll do a quick demo so you can see what it does, and then I'll talk a bit about how it actually works, what's going on, and then I'll do a, a longer demo at the end. Um, so the, the basic idea is there's a, there's a type of logic puzzle called a nonogram, um, and they can be in 2D or 3D, and uh, people have written generators and solvers for 2D puzzles, but as far as I could tell, no one had tried to do either puzzle generation or puzzle solving in, in 3D before. Um, so that's that's what I did. And um, so the ba basic idea is you start with um, just a normal polygonal model, um, and you uh, put that into a uh, cube field, um, turn off all the cubes which aren't inside the model, and now you have kind of this cube approximation of your original shape. Um, and this acts as the solution for the puzzle. Um, from this you can generate the numeric clues um, and then to, to prove that this is a valid logically solvable puzzle um, I wrote a, a few different uh, puzzle solvers which will um, use these clues to logically deduce the solution. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basic idea. Um, to explain what's going on in a bit more depth, I'll first explain what a nonogram is. Um, so this is uh, an example of a, a really small 2D nonogram uh, where uh, you have this empty grid that you want to fill in somehow and you have these numbers which dictate um, which cells to fill in. Um, because the, the numbers tell you that the tell you the lengths of consecutive blocks of cells to colour in. Uh, so this 6, for example, tells me that there are 6 adjacent cells that I need to fill in somewhere in this line. And in this case the line is only 6 long, so I can just fill the whole line in. Um, whereas this 3 here, um, I want to fill in 3 consecutive cells, but this line is 4 long. So I know that I could fill in this one, this one, and this one, or I could fill in this one, this one, and this one. Those are my only two possibilities. Um, but you can, you can see that... Um, in, in, in both solutions, uh, both this cell and this cell are filled in. And so I know that I must be able to fill this one in because in every possible solution for this line, this cell is filled in. Um, so that's kind of an example of the uh, ways that you can deduce information. Um, you can also kind of work out where empty cells are. So for example, this two, I, have, I already have one block, uh, one, one cell, and I know that either um, there's a block of length 2 somewhere in the line, so I know that either this one or this one is solid. Um, this one cannot possibly be filled in, uh, so I can mark this one as empty, because I know that it's definitely empty. Um, and here, for example, this, this perpendicular line where I've already worked out some, some bit of information, if I then look at the perpendicular line, um, it's likely that that will lead to more information. So in this case, um, I know that I have a, a block of length 1 and then a block of length 2, because uh, when, when you have multiple numbers, that means that there's multiple blocks of cells with one or more empty cells in between them. So I know that this cell must be empty, because I have a block of length 1 to start off my line. Uh, and now I have a block of length 2 to place somewhere in here, but I can't make any deductions, because it could be these two, or these two, or these two. Um, and because they don't, there isn't an overlap between all of them, um, I can't say for sure uh, which of these cells are filled in and which aren't. Um, and this kind of continues um, until you've configured the grid uh, fully. Um, so uh, this this line here, for example, uh, that must be on its own, and this one must be filled in. And similarly here, um, this 3 is kind of similar to this one, so I can do that. Um, here this 2, we know it must be here. So now we have a 1, so all of these must be empty. Um, and you can kind of, and so on and so forth, until you've solved the puzzle. Um, and so here I've drawn a, a tiny goat. Um, but the the point is that there is only one configuration of the grid, this configuration, which um, fully uh, kind of matches up with all of these clues. And so that is the the one and only solution for this puzzle. Um, in three D. Uh, this is a, a game called Picross 3D, running in a DS emulator. Um, in 3D puzzles, you so in in 2D you have 
two axes of information and by cross-referencing them you make deductions essentially um, and in, in 3D you obviously have three axes of information uh, which is too much, it makes it trivial and so for a 3D puzzle you have to remove information somehow and you can do that in, in two different ways one is by uh, just removing clues so like a lot of these lines don't have a clue at all um, and the, the other way that you can remove information is by combining clues um, so in in a 2D puzzle if you have multiple blocks of cells in a line you get given multiple clues um, and the, the order that the clues are in is the order that the blocks will appear in um, but in a, in a 3D puzzle you're just given the sum of all of their lengths so you're told how many cells in the line um, should be filled in uh, but you're not told um, in, in, in what groups are they split up into um, or at least not fully uh, so if there's if there's no shape around the number, then it acts uh, the same way as it does in a 2D. So this three here means that there there is a there are three consecutive cells somewhere in this line that I want to keep, and I want to remove all of the other ones. Um, but if there's if there's a circle around the number, that means that there's there's that many cells. So here this four is a circle around it. I know that in total there are four cells in this line that I want to keep. And a circle means that they're split into exactly two groups. Uh, so it could be a group of three, then one, or two, then two, or one, then three. And the the order of um, the order of these groups matters. So three and one, and one and three are, are distinct um, possibilities. Uh, and if there's a if there's a square around the number, that means they're split into three or more sets. Uh, so this four the square around it that could be uh, one 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 or it could be two one one or one two one or one one two. Um, I just know that there's four cells in total in a line. And so in a, in in my application um, the I get a bigger puzzle. Um, the uh, black ones are uh, normal normal uh, cells. The orange ones are the kind of circle clues. That that means that there's there's seven cells in total, and they're split into two groups. Uh, and the red ones are the square ones. So here there are seven cells on this line, split into three or more sets. Um, and you, you can imagine with with seven or eight or, or more, uh, there's quite a few different configurations. There's a, there's a lot of different ways that you could split seven up into three or more sets. Um, and so that was, that was one of the things I had to solve was how, how do you handle these orange and red uh, clues um, so uh, and the way the, the solver works um, to explain that briefly um, so there's a few different solvers um, but what all of these solvers are is different ways of applying a line solver and what a, what a line solver does is it looks at uh, a single independent line of the puzzle and based on the, the current state that you've already worked out and the clue, um, it logically deduces everything possible about that line. Um, and what happens is as you make deductions in, in one line, that gives you new information for perpendicular lines um, and, and so on and so forth until the, the puzzle is solved. Um, and so all these different solvers are is different approaches for applying the line solver to the puzzle. Uh, so the simplest one is the brute force one and, and what this does is it, it simply goes across every line of the puzzle applying the line solver um, iteratively until um, either some max iteration is hit um, or the puzzle is solved. Um, and what's going on is when it turns the cell off that means it's worked out it's definitely empty and when it turns it green, that's worked out, it's definitely on. Um, and you can see that for these last few cells, it takes quite a while and it makes a lot of bad guesses. Um, and what the what the bad guesses is, is um, that's my term for whenever you apply a line solver and it doesn't make any deductions. Um, and so what I was trying to do with these, these other solvers was um, reducing the, the total number of line solvers that they use to find the solution 
and reducing the percentage of them which are bad guesses. And so um, they they both have this option of a pre-pass. All the pre-pass does is it um, all of the lines which are completely empty, it just empties all of those um, it, as an initial kind of pre-pass. Uh, so, the, so the way that the hierarchical solver works, and you can see it's much faster, um, is uh, what it does, it iterates across the puzzle um, line by line in the same way that the brute force solver does, until it makes a deduction. And when it makes a deduction, it pushes the lines which are perpendicular to that new information into a queue, and then it processes the queue. And whenever it makes more deduction, uh, by process I mean it applies line solvers to each of the lines in the queue in turn. Um, and whenever it makes more deductions from a line in the queue, it adds uh, the lines perpendicular to the, that new information into the queues as well. And so what happens is you make uh, one deduction and then it kind of spreads out from there. Um, and this was based on something that I noticed when, you, uh, as a human player, when, when, when a human is solving these puzzles, what they'll often do is they'll make one deduction and then immediately look at the perpendicular line because the, there's new information there and it's likely to lead to more information. And so that's kind of what that was, um, that was how that came about was um, I was thinking about, well I have this, I'm trying to solve this puzzle using logic, so let's not just use logic on a line by line basis, let's use logic on an overall um, approach to, to see if we can reduce the amount of line by line solving that we need to do. Um, and it worked, it worked very well. Uh, the hierarchical and the heuristic solvers both use significantly fewer line solvers and have significantly fewer bad guesses than the, the brute force approach. You can you can see the, the output here. Um, and so the, the last one is the heuristic solver. And the way this one works is um, every it assigns a priority to every unsolved line based on um, a, a just a, a heuristic that I came up with, which, uh, just a cheap guess of this is how likely it is uh, that we'll get information if we apply the full line solver here. And so we, we assign every unsolved line a priority and then uh, apply the line solver to whatever the highest priority line is. And uh, whenever we make deductions, we increase the priority of the perpendicular lines because again, that's, there's new information there and it's likely to lead to more. Um, and what's interesting about the heuristic is that um, it's actually not very good at guessing where information is, but it's very good at steering towards it. Um, and so what happens is um, the, the best performance for this is actually when you set the initial priority for, for every line to zero. Um, and what happens is it very quickly self-corrects. And um, with the brute force solver, what you see is it makes... Um, as more and more of the puzzle is solved, it makes more and more bad guesses because there's less information available when you're just going line by line iteratively. Um, but the heuristic solver does the exact opposite. Um, it starts off with lots of bad guesses and then gets um, has exponentially fewer as more of the puzzle is solved, uh, which is a nice kind of counterpoint. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of a brief overview of, of what this project was. Um, my full dissertation goes into um, great detail about how the line solver works and how these different approaches work, um, how the voxelization um, works, and how, how it all kind of compares, how these different techniques compare. Um, and so please feel free to check that out if you're interested. Um, and oh, you can also, uh, when you're running the solvers, um, you can start with all of the cells turned up, uh, turned on, which is carve. Uh, or you can start with all of them turned off, which is build. Um, it makes no difference to the solver; it's just purely a rendering thing. Um, but that's that's it for me. Um, I'm just gonna run the different solvers in in carve and build mode on this puzzle, so you can kind of see how uh, dramatically different they are in terms of how they, which order they solve the lines. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.